at that kind of sample rate. Holy moly. Uh, there we go. I was recording something earlier, so it was never going to go out at 20,000 kilobits per second. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can see us, welcome, welcome, welcome. This Hello. is the hop pole position, and today I'm going to play a little bit of guitar for you that sounds like this. that Liam can't hear at all, which is absolutely hilarious. There's lots of news to talk about this week, including I'm going to tell you some things that I'm not allowed to tell you, so I can't tell you. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> Onwards, let's roll the intro. And camera one, how are you? Sat in the dark there. Yes, me, oh, it's very dark. Oh, it wasn't as dark a second ago. I ah. was oh, ah! uh, and now you've got light on your camera. There we go. Yeah, some... I'm good. Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Having some day, bit rate issues there, but hopefully that'll clear up. Lockdown. Yeah, certainly feels that way, doesn't it? Mm hmm. Oh, it's going really, really fast for me because there's so much to do. So, so much. Um, um, for anyone who's watching the stream who may or may not be aware, I had some fun with a mix competition this week, but mm -hmm. I did I did two mixes for it, uh, one which was basically, here's how I would mix, and one that was, here's how we do it, using nothing but Reaper's inbuilt stock plugins as challenge. Mm-hmm. And then the day that I did that, I got the news that my partner Mickey has gone back to work now four days a week. So I've been with child since. <laughs> ah. I've been with the child. I've not been with child, which is a, a very different thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. But yeah, think things are moving very, very quickly and there's a lot to uh, to do. Uh, I've been looking at new new gear, but on on the cheap and how to do things affordably. Because of course, mm -hmm. in this uh, this time, I want to get some amazing tones for recording at home. But there's only so much that you know you can reasonably afford to do. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I did, I'm I'm using this guitar which I've had for a while. It's the my uh, Heart Telecaster, which is that's the one. It's the the Heart Telecaster, mm -hmm. and it's got EMGs in, and it's connected through a real PV5150, which is down at my feet. It goes through a load box and through a torpedo, uh, two notes torpedo cab M, which on its own sounds like this. Which is brutal. Uh, but a lot of people use a tube screamer with it, which is kind of the, the done thing to make it sound more brutal. And I got tipped off to a very clever trick, which is don't use that, use a clon. Uh, Klon's a Klon. Fam a Klon. Uh, famously, the Klon Centaur is a pedal that they're, they're kind of selling on the second-hand market for about £2,000 at the moment for some ridiculous oh. reason. Okay. Uh, probably because the guy that makes them handmade them isn't making any more, you know, that kind of hen's teeth thing. But mm -hmm. the circuit itself isn't, isn't that hard to figure out, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people will say, oh, you can only get the, that tone out of the real one, but uh, there's a company called Musky that are making them for 20 quid. I think it was 23. Oh, right. And it goes from, and again, you'll hear this at home, but it goes from this, which is heavy, to this. Very, very heavy indeed. And it's a bit of a secret weapon, apparently, of a lot of producers. I saw the guitarist from uh, Bring Me the Horizon doing this with a Marshall. And right. the, the tone that he was getting live while he was talking to these guys, I was just like, I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been doing my research, finding what's affordable. I'm just going to turn this amp off now. It, it makes my feet very warm. Because it, it's it's literally in front of my feet, and it's a 100-watt valve amp. Oh, there we go. So that's one of the things I've been doing this week. And the other thing is this old strat behind me. This has been my number one strat since I was, what, 14? I've had it mm -hmm. since I was seven. It currently looks like this. 
everything is missing. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, again, I had an idea. that the, the pickups and electronics that I'd put in it uh, about 10 years ago now were cool for the time, but were really kind of cheap by a company called mm-hmm. Artec. And if you touched the pit guard, it went dot, 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 which threw a high gain tone. Not ideal. So, mm-hmm. uh, uh, my friends at Jack's Instrument Services are helping me out. Uh, so uh, I've ordered a couple of new humbuckers and a load of clever wiring, uh, which got sent straight to them. And I've taken the pit guard off here and uh, mm-hmm. cleaned it and just posted it to them. And what they're going to do is they're going to take the pit guard that was on here and make me a new one uh, that's okay. in a color that I want using the shape, uh, but putting uh, different pickups in and changing a few things because on a strap have you ever noticed on a strap the volume controls right near your little finger Mm -hmm. yeah so i've said to him yeah just just get rid of one of the pots and move them all down one (laughs) (laughs) so yeah um he's gonna do all that uh clean it uh leave it to be uh you know um decontaminated or whatever you're gonna call it and then post it to me and we're we're doing a remote guitar upgrade (laughs) nice yeah so it's going to be a real rocking uh, recording guitar, but we won't have met in person. I mean, I've met Jack in person, but this was last year. So, yeah, it's mm-hmm. still possible to do all sorts of clever stuff uh, mm-hmm. whilst maintaining safe distance from everybody. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was That's pretty cool. Between, between those and several hours of streaming this week and looking after the child, uh, mm-hmm. it's been a busy week. Mm. Yeah, um, I've been doing something with Two Notes as well this week, which I'm not really allowed to talk about, but I, I kind of ca- can, because Guillaume, the CEO, has literally just done a live stream talking about some of these new features. But the uh, the Two Notes, the Torpedo Cab M, which is the new pedal of the cab simulator, is getting a major upgrade. All right. So there's a lot of features that, yeah, that's, he's asked me not to say what the features are, even though he's literally just been, you know, done a live stream. He must have just gone, you know what, YOLO, and just, <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of features that well, are that's... going to be in there that weren't in there before. Well, I suppose if he's just in the stream about it and the VOD's on, then that's the only place to go for that information, so. Yes. Yeah, so if you're really, really, really interested in what's new there, go to the Two Notes Audio Community group on Facebook and check that out, mm-hmm. but it's all still in a beta stage it's not been officially released as an update yet because there's little bugs to be fixed Mm -hmm. Uh, nothing major but you know little bits always need sorting out Mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's a real game changer it makes it worth a lot more of your time as well as your money i'm very interested and uh happy to be beta testing it especially because i'm actually using it in my recording setup at home Mm -hmm. definitely makes it more versatile for me and it's i get first stuff, isn't it? yeah it's very good stuff and i get first dibs on trying all the cool new features <laughs> so yeah i'm very much excited that's that's my piece of news that i can't tell you about that i'm telling you about <laughs> <laughs> yes anything anything new from from you that's uh <laughs> no just same old same old to say this whole thing's a bit weird for me to say because nothing's really changed so mm. no free time to do anything interesting just lots of work uh so joy yes yes just the same old same old really right uh one thing I, I did make the title of this one a half century of uh music tech podcast because this is episode number 50 Ooh. Ooh, we've done half a hundred of these podcasts already, which is really half quite impressive. Yeah. So we're yeah. coming upon doing this uh, as a weekly format for a year now. Holy shit. That's gone fast. That has gone fast. That's a lot of podcasts. That is a lot of podcasts. And that's not including the, uh, the Hopcast, which was the one before, which had many, many episodes. Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah. In, in comparison, probably not that many. <laughs> probably yeah, not, no. Yeah. The Hopcast was going for for a while longer. Um, yeah, but it was monthly. I monthly. Think. Yeah. And some months you you didn't do them, if I remember. So uh, I remember seeing I uh, I saw a a uh, was it a photo on Facebook or somewhere where it was a shot of you and Chris setting up the very first one in the studio. Oh, that's what that was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were filming for something. I can't remember what because yeah, Chris yeah, was behind. Cause, 
Yeah, because it was the, oh, me and I'm going to do a show, which eventually turned into this. That's um, right. You, you did it when we were just, um, I had a bit of a downtime in work. So you did actually on work time. Huh. So technically, I own this. Uh-huh. <laughs> you did it on bad at a time. I own it. I'm Checks in the mail. The IP. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 3P. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, yeah. So I think it was like one lunchtime when we were as a um, a personal project. You and Chris said we're going to try and do this, and you did it. Sat next to each other, um, and it ended up being like a three part nine hour thing or something stupid. I remember, and then it turned into the streaming version. Yeah. Oh yeah, we were doing yeah these really long interviews, and it turned into well, why don't we just make a podcast yeah. out of this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so that, that's it- what that was. Yeah, and we kind of bumbled through it until it was something half decent, and then we thought, right, mm-hmm. let's start again, <laughs> do this properly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think it was called the Hopcast then, it was just... Oh, that's thing. weird. The, the title says, this is Hot Pole Position number 0505. Uh, that's because I'm a doofus. Save, there that's we go. Nice. That's, that's nice. That should change the name at some point. There we go. It shall be saved henceforth as 050, number 50. This is not 505. We've not got there just yet. <laughs> Chris Jericho who makes this uh, Talk is Jericho podcast. He's on about episode 600 of his, but he makes two a week because he's crazy. Wow. That is pretty crazy. He's a man who can gab for, well, you know, he trained as a journalist. Right, okay. Nice. Before he was a wrestler, yeah. He didn't know whether he wanted to be a wrestler or a journalist, so he studied to be a journalist. Mm-hmm. Which is one reason why, he, I think, why he does a really good podcast, because he's trained in shutting up and listening. Mm-hmm. And then, through being a wrestler, he's trained in the other art, which is talking. Shutting people up so they listen. <laughs> mm. The two together, I think, makes for quite a formidable podcast, and he's had a lot mm. of well-known people on that podcast. Very, very impressive indeed. Yes, the hot pole position since 1823. <laughs> Sometimes it feels oh, like it. Building was, yeah, it's older than the building even. Building yeah. was 1897, I think, or 1898, something like that. Yes, the building's been there a while. It's is old, almost as old as America. <laughs> almost. Yes. <laughs> I've got a, a Yamaha mixing desk in the storeroom that's about as old as America. <laughs> Runs on floppy disks. <laughs> Can you say That's that? Good. You've got a f- mixing desk that runs on floppy disks. <laughs> Not a computer that runs a mixing desk, the actual desk. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. So, um, onwards to the news. To the the news. news. I need to make a little stinger for the news that goes, the news. Yes. I have a stream deck that, that just plays good. a terrible sound. That would be amazing. <laughs> so, um, let's start with something rather simple, a new plugin that's come out. Uh, this wave, wave Tracing SP950. So, this is pretty cool. Um, this goes back to old school hip hop. Um, so, like, old school hip hop had a certain sound. And mm-hmm. all, all, the, all the samples were always really weirdly lo fi and always really gritty. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like Dre's Chronic and that kind of era. Mm-hmm. Late N- mm-hmm. NWA and that kind of that kind of era, mm-hmm. all the samples had this real like radio effect, and there was a reason for it. And the reason is that samplers that it, that they had then really didn't have much RAM at all. We're talking like if you could spend a lot of money, you could upgrade one to like two megabytes of RAM or something stupid. Mm-hmm. So what they did to get around this is they would get the samples on vinyl and slow the vinyl down. Uh, no, that's right. They would speed up the vinyl as fast as it could go, sample mm-hmm. it onto the sampler so they could get the shortest possible sample. And then you press a button on the sampler, it plays it slower. Mm-hmm. So it would, it would, because it was sampling so fast and then playing it slow through these really rubbish, like 12 bit uh, converters, it got that hip hop sound. And so Akai's S950 was the thing that everybody... Uh, used. The Emu SP1200 was the thing that people were doing it with. And the Akai S950 was the other one, which had this filter in it, which would make it kind of sound a bit nicer. So between them, that's how you got that sound. So with this plugin, uh, you can put your 
actual normal samples underneath it and it'll sound like that and apparently it's a very different thing to just using an eq because the way that the kind of not perfect digital systems at the time would work it would do something to the sound and then when you slowed it down it'd do something different to the sound so yeah that's how you got that real rough sound out of it (laughs) that was really cool uh, so it's 20 euros for this plugin. So if you're into old school hip hop and you want your samples to have that lo-fi vibe, that's a good way to get it. Check that out. Thanks. Moving on. Um, Sound Toys, uh, the people at Sound Toys, whose plugins I absolutely love and have the whole bundle, are offering up to 80% off their individual plugins, which is an absolute bargain for what some of those do. And nearly 40% off the whole bundle if you want to go crazy and get the whole thing. I um, If anyone saw the mixed uh, video that I did of Chelsea by Drag Dunder uh, earlier this week, uh, that's the one that I sent you to, to listen to, by the way. Uh, mm-hmm. The yeah, mixed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so very pop punk, very... I mean, yeah, they'll probably not call themselves pop punk, but it is. It was blatant pop punk. Mm. That's what I, I thought. I wouldn't... I- I wouldn't call it pop punk, but it was more. I mean, it, had, it definitely had vibes of it, massively influenced, but it also reminded me of kind of um, like early to mid 2000s uh, My Chemical Romance as well in some of the tones, which is more kind of emo core, I guess you'd probably call it. Yeah, I suppose so. It's kind of somewhere between those. Um, but yeah, no, it was cool. T- teenage rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um a lot of that, that had Sound Toys plugins in like Echo Boy was on my delays. Um I had Devil Lock somewhere doing some heavy compression. Um so a lot of their stuff is stuff that I really go to for effects. Definitely mm-hmm. worth looking at. Now, if that's yeah, still too much money for you, how about free? Um I came free? multi free uh, I'll take two. I, I came multimedia who make Amplitube are giving away their orange tiny terror sim for the next week. So if you've got Amplitube or you're thinking of getting Amplitube because you like uh, virtual amps, uh, this is a really cool model. I've tried this and it's quite nice. Uh, It sounds a lot like a real tiny terror. It's got that real British kind of mid growl to it. And yes, uh, you can get the custom shop Amplitube, which is free. And then you can probably download this uh, for free and have it all for free. Ooh, free is good. Free is always good. Mm. And then that'll uh, that'll probably then make you go, oh, I like this. I'll buy some of the other ones. That's their thinking, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, typically the 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 head on its own uh, is twenty four dollars ninety nine. Okay. So you're saving twenty five dollars by getting that now. If you want to get that now, now, now. Seems like a, a no-brainer. Mm. You never so know he, when you might need an orange head. Yes. <laughs> yes, the less said about people with orange heads, the better. <laughs> hey, I like Ed Sheeran. <laughs> well, yes. Yes, good for you. Somebody's got to. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one that I wanted to have a bit of a discussion on. Sorry, I'm saying discussion because I accidentally bit my tongue earlier because I'm suffering from uh, all the hay fevery pollen-y stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Facebook Live, it's this whole new thing of being able to charge to view live streams. Right, yep. So the, the subheading is uh, a great new resource for live artists seeking an income stream or is it another shameless corporate cash-in Exploiting already cash starved creatives. So, um, I think anything that allows content creators to monetize their content is good mm. as long as it's fair and balanced and the, the content creators are getting a fair share. Yeah, I mean, well, that, that's the bit that's still a gray area. There's not, it's, yeah, it's, it's been announced. Uh, I don't know if it's out yet, but. Facebook haven't told anybody what the percentage cut is that they'll be taking. So that's the big question, isn't it? I mean, mm. 
it's a bit weird that it's a, it's a platform where you can broadcast for free at any time. The, there is, of course, always a cost. The cost is personal information and all that kind of jazz. Nothing comes for free. But as soon as it becomes a paid thing on the same platform... Wait, so who's paying? The so, viewers are paying, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's like doing private streams on Twitch and charging people through a Patreon. So at the moment, you might do... I don't really know many people that do, but theoretically, you can do private streams on Twitch and then you could have a Patreon where you send a link to them or similarly on YouTube. You could do it and you'd have to use an external service. So having it so that there's a way to do it through your actual community of having some sort of... Is it a subscription or is it like a one-off thing? I can't read the article. It's that weird. I don't know. Um, so let's just... Um, it, it's very vague it's at the moment. If it's that could be really good. I think that that's the gist I'm getting from this. Uh, We plan to add the ability for pages to charge for access to events with live videos on Facebook. Yeah, so like an online pay-per-view. Yeah. Yeah. The only question, like I say, is the percentage that they take on that. Uh, Do the viewers get anything other than exclusivity for that cut? Because, like I say, you can already... Go to the content creator again. Like... Exclusivity would be the main one, and then the content creator could decide to give them whatever along with that. Yeah, no, that, that, that's all well and good. I have no issue with that. My question is, when Facebook get a cut, what do you get back from them that you wouldn't get with a free video? Like, Nothing. do you get higher bitstream, higher quality? They, I think they should give you something. Well, I mean, the overall service might be, like... A higher quality to the normal live streams, maybe. Yeah. But like, I think it's it's access to the stream. I'd imagine it'd be the same personally. It's just that it was more for the content creator that can um, put a, a payment gateway on a live event. Mm. Um, and as long as the and ultimately, like, yeah, as long as it's fairly reasonable, then like, I wouldn't be surprised if they took quite a big cut, like mm. even up to like fifty percent. Anything more than that would wouldn't be right, but. Um, because they're giving them giving you everything in terms of the platform and allowing you to, uh, yeah, it's making it easy. If you, I think it worked well for people that have big Facebook communities. Um, yeah, and especially in today's world, I mean, you could put a gig on. Yeah, like just be like, cool, I'm gonna have a gig tonight in my bedroom, <laughs> and just put a gig on, sell tickets to your friends on Facebook. <laughs> my Chemical Romance live from Jared's house. <laughs> yeah. That that would probably break their live streaming servers, yeah. Which would be justified by the income they would receive from it. People makes, are shouting out sense. for it at the moment. I mean, the amount of people that have never been on Twitch that are on Twitch now, like, there's like three or four F1 drivers that are streaming like daily at the moment, like Matt Verstappen and um, Leclerc and a few other people. Like, because they've got nothing to do. <laughs> So mm. unless things go back to normal anytime soon, like they need a way to express their creativity. Yeah, that's w- probably why I started hacking my guitar apart yesterday was to express my creativity. <laughs> <laughs> There's only so far I can go with that before I have to start. But then I suppose I'm on the other side of it that rather than looking for a stream, I can be the streamer. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's an interesting position to be in. It's odd. I mean, mm-hmm. I like it, but it's just weird. I'm I'm sitting there each day thinking, well, what can I broadcast? What can I talk about? <laughs> what new thing can I show people? <laughs> I've been I've been trying desperately to look around the house somewhere. I've got um an iPad or iPhone to HDMI dongle, a proper official Apple one, but I can't find it, and it's you really annoying. Me, didn't you? Did I? Yeah, when um. I'm sure it's in our living room. That's why I can't find it. Right, okay. I can uh, stop looking. When I, wanted to plug, when I wanted to plug the iPad into the projector about ah. five months ago, I think it probably was. Right. And I said, do you want it back? And he said, I probably won't need it. Uh, keep it until I need it. And that's completely fair because I, I didn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, uh, ah. And also, we're, we're in the building much more often at the time. Didn't think yeah. it would be. You think, hmm, 
What if next time I need it, there's a global pandemic and I'm locked in my house and can't come over to get it? Um, I think it's reasonable that that wasn't on your mind. No, yeah. I've still not got the litre and a half of Jägermeister of mine that's been there. That's on my kitchen years. table. Yeah, that's on my <laughs> kitchen table. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've got a, a Jägermeister. Cupboard, so I've got a Jägermeister so large, I need to go and get it from uh, Liam's house. And it's got a pump and handle. It does. It's ridiculous in the best possible way. That could Left really have helped from, me with this uh, pandemic. Yeah. What was it? Uh, Super Bowl 2016. Wow. Or 15. One of the two. <laughs> well, you must have Probably 16, last actually. Yes, yeah, it's 16. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll be absolutely fine. Oh, like, yeah. It'll be still in date when we finally make it out of lockdown. <laughs> yeah. If anything, it's probably getting stronger sat in that bottle. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but... <laughs> just stewing in some spices, fine. fermenting. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I had a little bit of it about two months ago. And my body does not like Jägermeister. Does not agree with it. Ah, my body loves Jägermeister in very, very small amounts, uh, <laughs> which is why it's still mostly full. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> indeed. So, yeah, I mean it. I, I am interested to see Facebook doing this kind of thing. Uh, one of my favourite artists, Devin Townsend, uh, has done a few uh, live streams this week. Uh, what was the... It was a very similar service to that where you bought tickets to see a live stream thing. I can't remember the name of the mm -hmm. service. Um, but it seemed to work very well. His second stream was to, to support the NHS and raised over $85,000 in a single stream, which is impressive. Mm, it's good. Yeah. Um, I think he's doing another one tomorrow. He did one. Yeah, I think he's doing one every Saturday. Right. But yeah, it's a very cool setup that he's got. He's using an OBS, much like we are. Uh, he's got four cameras running. Uh, he's changing between them using uh, an Xbox controller that's on a little <laughs> plinth next to him. So he's playing guitar and he reaches over and goes, boop. And yeah, one camera. Surely you can have that on a foot, on like a, a foot pedal. A mid midi Pro foot pedal. Probably could, but I mean, he's at home in lockdown. He's got certain amounts of stuff available to him. He's he's surely he's got a MIDI controlled pedal somewhere. Whatever, he's he's done it that way. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the thing that I thought was really clever is he's got a standard camera, much like ours are. He's got one that's on the floor looking up, which is that kind of cool crowd thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's got one behind him where he's got a desk fan. He's stuck the fan out, and he's stuck the camera in there, so it automatically pans <laughs> like, and, and his fourth one is off to the side and it's a proper like rock and roll metal camera it's a phone strapped to a usb much like i'm using now but attached mm -hmm. to a couple of foam blocks attached to a wooden arm attached to a cake mixer so the cake mixer's <laughs> going blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and so it's properly rocking and rolling the camera okay that's epic yeah that's clever <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, when That's he goes to a heavy metal part, he just goes boop, dig, 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 and it, yeah. <laughs> Who yeah, needs cameramen? <laughs> yeah, he's nothing short of genius, that man. <laughs> he's controlling all this whilst playing these epic guitar parts and singing, and it's all automated off one laptop, so that all his effects and stuff for his guitar turn on automatically. That's all then being sent out to a second laptop with OBS on. Damn impressive. Wow. Oh, I um, I had to do some uh, noise reduction today for some filming for a, a client, and uh, they'd done some filming at a, a gym where there was um, I, I don't know what the noise was. It sounded like camera noise, but it wasn't, as well mm. as a massive air conditioning unit. So there was a really low, mm, as well as a mm, at the same time, and it's pretty much the same volume as the guy that's speaking. So, oh, right. and, the, and also he hadn't set his frame rate, um, shutter speed right, so oh. that there was banding on one of the cameras. <sighs> so I put it into Resolve, and I threw the D-Flicker um, plugin onto uh, the camera, and the banding just disappeared instantly. Not a single trace of it. Right. Um, just boom, done. And you can then you can select um, to view the the, so the the banding or the flicker. Uh, and it gives you a gray version where it outlines where it can see it. And it was like basically showing a ghost of it. And then you just show the end result. And literally, you couldn't tell it ever had it on it at all. It was incredible. Wow. Um, 
you know, really, really good the way that noise reduction has got now for, for the video part. Onto the audio part, obviously those two frequencies really strong um, put the Resolve uh, noise reduction uh, filters on, which has a learning platform so you can learn the noise pattern, et cetera, and do reduction. And it did, did okay. You can still hear the whine. The rumble's gone pretty much completely. Mm. Obviously, there's, there's a decent amount of loss in sort of the the richness of the guy's voice, but it's not awful to hear now. But then I turned on the RTX voice onto um, my headphones to h- hear the difference, uh, and just both parts just gone, just completely wow. gone. <laughs> like with like pretty much zero loss in quality as well. I was just like, this is insane. So I'm feeling like the only solution to actually do. I'm feeling bad now because what I've done now is what he should reasonably be able to expect. However, if I was to record the output of my speakers into Premiere um, and basically play the two and a half hour video through that with RTX on, it would mm. remove all the audio and all the noise completely. But because yeah. there's no plugin, there's no other way to do it than do that. Yeah. And like all notifications off, like Slack, Discord, everything's got to be off. There can't be a single boom, boom. <laughs> Otherwise, that will be forever in his video. <laughs> <laughs> So, so what I did really you think hope... about this? Boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So NVIDIA really needs to release as a plugin because it's, it's fucking insanely good. Yeah. Like, trying it. I mean, obviously, I'm not using sort of... I'm using Resolve or in Premiere. I tried it in both. But for a lot of video editors, like the audio facilities in those are what you'd use. Um, mm. And the noise reduction in Resolve isn't shabby. Like, for audio, it's, it's decent. It's not a basic program. But uh, mm. what's the one that we used for um, the Jessica Biel film? It was a uh, Sony one or something. I remember, because that was really good as well. For yeah. noise reduction, I think I might have used Waves WNS or something like that. Mm. Z Noise, or I can't remember now. It's oh, it's bit. casting my mind back a bit. Yeah, back to when we did ADR for a Hollywood film and realized that the noise for one of our mics wasn't low enough for what they needed so we yeah. had to do some noise reduction to get away with it do you reckon the deflicker in uh resolve just to be off track for a second um i've got a an, an older piece of footage where there's there's a a, a light in the background mm-hmm. that kind of pulses just yep. s- slowly mm-hmm. okay i'll get rid of it it's amazing it's really good I'll have to send you send that over if you can. Send it on Dropbox and I'll, I'll throw it in. And I'll just like, because the craziest thing about all of it is it's real time. So I can literally put it on, turn the plug on and play it and record it for you and show you what it looks like. like yeah, insane. that'd be amazing because I've, I've got a, an old interview that's not really usable because of that because it's really quite distracting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd yeah, be cool. Across and I'll give it a go. Yeah. yeah, like NVIDIA really, like it's the first time I've tried it other than for a streaming purpose. And I was like, this... There is nothing that I have that compares to this. And it's annoying because the only way I can make it work is by, yeah, recording the output of my computer. Hmm. No, there'll be a way of doing it, I'm sure. Uh, you Using something like uh, voice meter. I'm sure you'll be able to set the output of RTX voice to something other than just speakers yeah 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 yeah. i mean i mean you know i basically i've got a somehow i've just which is i'm sure i can put out i've got to do the record what you hear element of my computer rather than being able to put a plugin in and hit export i've got yeah uh, doing it in real time yeah i've got to record all the audio through it as if it was hardware and then once i've done that then i've got to export the video which takes another like two and a half hours to export so it's like a a five hour round trip of yeah. which for two and a half of those hours I can't do anything with my computer at all. Well no no because well, what I'm thinking is if you do it with a voice meter and use voice meter oh, right, it's yeah. got an inbuilt recorder. Yeah send the output to uh, yeah I could do. To voice meter just leave that running. Good point. I'll do Aha <laughs> Yeah just mm. it can record a twenty four bit wave so just boom. Yeah I won't open voice meter banana because that's what happened last time. Yeah, that, that'll uh, cause issues if you do it right this minute. But you can always I leave it overnight s- as well. With having this Evo now and the RTX thing and voice meter, I have like 2,000 inputs on my computer now, I think. Oh, All of them it, virtual. It <laughs> well, gets ridiculous. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, I'm using this Archoria that gives me about, I'm not exaggerating, about 16 stereo inputs and outputs. It, it looks so, horrible. Do they all show up in Windows then as well? Yeah. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah, because all the ADAT <laughs> inputs and outputs as well, they all show up as stereo pairs. <laughs> so yeah, I've got a list, a real list. It's the same in the studio with the RME card. I've got like, because it's got 36 in, 36 out. That's like mm-hmm. 18 stereo pairs in, 18 <laughs> stereo pairs out in Windows just for that. <laughs> uh, you end up swimming hilarious. through lists of... Uh, mm. Yeah. Uh, just to quickly answer a question in chat from one of our viewers, can you review my mix? Uh, not in the podcast, we're just talking in the podcast. Uh, that's something we do. Uh, if you check out our Patreon, it's something that we offer for our patrons. But yes, um, it is something we can absolutely do. So, Follow um, us on Patreon. Yes, have a look at our Patreon. Um, Even just for one month. like You don't have to stay if you don't like us. But um, yeah, join for uh, at least a month. And then forget about it and keep paying forever. Wahaha. I mean, you know, just, like a gym just membership. Afterwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, this is something that I thought was very cool. Um, I really like the look of this guitar. Uh, this, um, mm. for, I'm not a massive anime nerd, but my favorite anime is definitely Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, it is like genre defining, it's really good. And mm. a lot of people seem to agree. And. There's a whole series of films, uh, the most recent of which is coming out in July. And to celebrate this release, uh, Fender Japan have dropped a Asuka Langley Soryu uh, special version of a Telecaster that looks like this. And I think that looks great. I mean, so that's the character, that's Asuka. Mm-hmm. And uh, they wear these like body suits to trans to control these giant robots because of course giant robots mm-hmm. because anime because mm-hmm. robots and yeah. it's a very iconic color um setup that she she has mm-hmm. her and her eva the giant robot have this black with slight orange tints and hints of green thing going on and it looks awesome and i would really really like one it's got uh, mm-hmm. l- lace uh pickups in there the uh uh, Alumitones, which I've used before. Me and Chris have used the Alumitones. They've got a very clear sound, very nice. And it just looks awesome. I mean, it's it's even got the, the, the Nerve NERV uh, logo in the back of the, uh, the the plate that holds the neck onto the body. That's some detail right there. And I just really like the way that this <laughs> is done. The strings That's go... Pretty cool. Yeah, strings appear to go through the body. I like this accenting work that it's kind of you know, starts and stops with these black stripes here. Mm-hmm. I and mean, it just, it it makes for an assumption of a line down that isn't actually there. I really mm-hmm. like that kind of assumed design thing, the way that it draws your eye in a certain way where that's not actually happening. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't notice it. It's got, a, it's got a red nut. I don't think I've ever seen another guitar with a red nut at the end. And yeah, uh, it's probably not going to be cheap. But no. I just I just really like the way that they've specifically themed it and gone as far as to do like a joint licensing thing. Uh mm. so it's gonna be two hundred and fifty nine thousand yen. Which is roughly uh don't quote me on this, but roughly uh two and a half thousand dollars pounds. <laughs> well, if if I say if I say dollars, that's not including sales tax, if I say pounds then we always assume in the UK, you know, that the, the, all the taxes are included in a price. Whereas when you say a price in the US, they always assume the tax is not included. So I've actually found that in a lot of the videos, especially when I'm talking like computer parts, but it's relatively, it seems to work. If I just say pounds, dollars, it, it's about yeah. right. <laughs> right. Okay. If you've ever had the thing where you've looked at a price of something in America and gone, well, why is it $2,000 and why do we pay 2,000 pounds? I found out why. And it is as simple as any tax that has to be paid, we assume it's in the price. And they always assume they have to add it on top. It's not always the case, but yeah. No, I, I because, can... yeah, but on business sites, you, we know that there's in, including VAT, excluding VAT. But as a consumer, I think we expect to pay a set price, right? 
Yeah, but like, there's online services and stuff where you, like, you'll get charged eight night. Eight dollars ninety nine for something, and that will be the price they take, and we'll pay eight pounds ninety nine for it. Like that happens quite a lot. But yeah. I mean, there will be use cases of what you're talking about, which I didn't know. So that is that's interesting. Well, I suppose the other thing is, as an international buyer, we don't pay their tax, but we pay import. Yeah. So yeah, it balances out, but. Yeah, generally speaking, and it's different in different states as well, which is one reason why they don't just put the price with the tax in. It's just awkward. There's like Californian sales tax, and there's oh, I guess ugh, I I don't even want to dive into it because it makes my head hurt. But I've looked into it and gone, geez, this is awful. Um, been to Canada a couple of times as a kid, and yeah, realized <laughs> when you when you buy something from the store and you go to the checkout. It it doesn't cost what it said it did on the wall. Mm -hmm. Even at like you know, Canadian Seven Eleven or whatever you want to call it, it just you pay tax. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's the same same in the US. It just depends how much on where you are. Yeah. Blah. But anyway, yes. Um, I really want one. I can't afford one. I don't think Fender will send me one, but that would be nice. Yes. Oh, I the want cake. Could you guitar? <laughs> the case has got the Nerve logo on and everything. That's just next level. That's very, very nice indeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, it's Nerd. time for Behringer Corner. Behringer Corner. Do, 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 do. Behringer Corner. In fact, we've got a double whammy of Behringer Corner this week. That's double the best bit. Behringer. Double Behringer okay, whammy. So, up first... Uh, they've kept everybody up to date. They're making a clone of the Oberheim OBXA, which is one of my favourite synths in the world. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's got this big, warm, fat sound. Easiest way to explain an OBX is Jump by Van Halen. Right, okay. There's loads more that it can do, but that's kind of, that's mm -hmm. what they're known for. Mm -hmm. And so Behringer are making one of those, and I really, really want one. Uh, thankfully, uh, Archuria, my friends at Archuria, make a software version of something similar called the Matrix, which is from the same family. And so I might not just have to go buy one, but uh, two years ago, uh, Behringer kind of teased this. I mean, look at the size of it. It's not like throwing out it's the little... Monster. Yeah. <clears throat> it's not like throwing out the little rack units that they can do a dime a dozen. Uh, but they've mm -hmm. uh, shown some new photos of a prototype. Like, hey, um, here's how where we're up to. There's some new controls that weren't on the original, which, of course, with modern MIDI and all that kind of stuff, you probably want some extra features because you know we've learned certain lessons that mm -hmm. that the originals probably would have had in hindsight. But mm -hmm. hindsight's a funny thing. And there's there's an extra LED display. Apparently, a lot of the uh, customer feedback based on the pictures of the original version they've been back and revised it all which is nice so the fact that they're showing us pictures of what they call finished hardware uh there's now uh this so pictures are out so i can't see it being too long before these are available for the public to buy at a greatly reduced cost compared to the original which was many thousands Ooh. yes and in a similar vein, uh, they have shared photos of what is a prototype of their Arpsolina string synth, which, again, is one of my favorite string ensemble little things. Uh, string ensemble string synths are more 70s than 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the name? Um, uh, Steve Harley, uh, come up and see me. Make me smile. That one. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a big string section in that that doesn't really sound like strings at all. It sounds like something trying to be strings. Mm -hmm. It's one of them. It's the original okay. Arpsolina. And I always really loved that that warbly, warped, pretending to be strings kind of sound. Daft Punk use mm -hmm. it a lot. Um, Air, uh, one of my favorite electronic uh, duos, used them a lot. And mm -hmm. so Behringer, uh, apparently a couple of years ago, uh, said, we're going to make an ARP, which they have now done, and a Selena, which they are now finally doing. So it's not, it's not quite there yet, 
but they've now said, here's the box. <laughs> now we're <laughs> going to make a lot of boxes. <laughs> so yeah, there's there's a MIDI port on it. There's USB on it, which I'm pretty sure the original didn't have. <laughs> so that's a nice upgrade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> USB not point one. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, uh, that's going to be uh, pretty cool for, for string synth fans, or just synth fans in general. If it's affordable uh, and you can just have it right there, then happy days. I mean, if Behringer are making this uh, DAW like they claim that they might do, the USB, it might basically become a plug-in that's actually a real thing. That's the way that a lot of Behringer stuff's going to go, apparently. You're going to need some really big USB hubs if you want to buy them all. <laughs> yeah. 20-port <laughs> USB hub under the desk and then just a stack of synths on your left. You never actually play any of them. <laughs> they play themselves. I almost, I almost bought a 24-port one. Was that for, like, Bitcoin mining with an ASIC? <laughs> no, just for all the crap I need to plug into my laptop. Wow. I nearly bought myself a four port this week and then I found one literally behind the sofa. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I've, I've, got, I've, I've I've got like USB lights and stuff. So instead ah. I just I just connected two four port USB hubs to <laughs> an iPhone charger and plugged it into the wall instead. Like, right. no, no need for it to be in the computer. What have I got plugged in? So I've got two USB hubs now. So I've got my uh I'll show your audio fuse obviously plugged in because I'm using that to do this. Uh, a phone plugged in as a webcam. Uh, I had a second phone plugged in as a webcam for another stream. Um, I've got my Torpedo Cab um, plugged in because I'm doing all the updates and tweaks with that. Um, what else? I've got my iLock and my Waves dongles plugged in. I've got a separate USB to MIDI box so that when I've got a keyboard by my side I can actually record stuff. Uh, and I've even got an SD card reader, which I've been playing around with the Raspberry Pi again. Uh, so, yeah, that's all plugged in all at once. <laughs> and there's a port free. <laughs> and it's a laptop. <laughs> I have one port free. Got an external hard drive, Stream Deck, Evo, a laptop. My keyboard takes up two USB slots. What? Uh, yeah. It's a really fat connector. Oh. No, it's, it's two ports. Why? Ask Corsair. Excuse me, Mr. Corsair. Yeah, uh, my mouse and Stream Deck said that. Don't know what else. Can't even see. Oh, webcam. Mm. Still, there's more. The port's over there. It's behind my laptop. It's oh, that's the other one that I plugged into the empty port. Was I had a webcam plugged in as well, so that I could have uh, this camera further over there, and I could have the extra camera on all the gear that's sat under my desk which is uh, a little cave of stuff at the moment. But yeah, I, I've just found a guy who hand makes tiny little wooden pedal boards that are like vertical for your pedals that can, so you can stand them up so you can see them on a desk. It's mm -hmm. going to be very, very cool in the studio having that on the desk so that when we're filming gear and that kind of thing, it can be plugged in and working and very elegantly shown to the camera. Mm-mm. And all handmade in the UK. Definitely That's helping cool. local business. So, yeah, nice little things like that make me very happy. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was uh, advertised to me by a German. But, <laughs> 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 but you know, you, you live with what, what, what life throws at you. <laughs> Indeed. Yes, our internet friend, Mr. Henning Pauli from HPI42, uh, got one of these and I saw it and was like, what is that? I want one. <laughs> And it turned out the guy was based in the UK, and I was like, ah, checkmate, Germans. <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah. Very, very cool that people are making little things in uh, in their sheds, and I get to benefit from that. So, yes, lots to do before the next stream, uh, including probably plan some more live streams over the weekend. And uh, play more Final Fantasy VII Remake because I've been trying to plow through that as well. It's a wonder I've had time to breathe. Uh, it's really good. Uh, I'm probably 10 or 15 hours in. Uh, but it's weird that compared to the original game, if I was comparing the timelines, no spoilers, but 
I'm about an hour and 20 minutes into the original. And I'm 10 to 15 hours into the remake. <laughs> like, they've, really right, fle- okay. they've really fleshed it out and packed it out. It's mm-hmm. impressive, ridiculous. I can see why they couldn't make it just one game. Because mm-hmm. otherwise you would be there until you're drawing a pension. Starting in you know, your 20s. And... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, which is going to happen. They're apparently working on the second part right now because they saw the sales figures and were like, right, okay, yeah, this is good. We're doing this. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I went out of my way to buy a PlayStation 4 to play this game. That's how important this game is. And I'm not a big fan of the battle system. Um, I hope I'm not liking I w- it. No, I mean, I'm putting up with it. Because... I'm really liking the game, and for me, it's the weak point. And it, it's now not just um, this isn't how I remember it because it, it very definitely isn't the same as the original. But it it just is clunky to me. They've tried to make it all streamlined and real time, and it's like mm, uh, that wasn't what this game was about. But then, for me, it was like when I moved from the old Fallouts, like Fallout 1 and 2, to the new Fallouts with the, you know, 3D, real time E. It's just an adjustment period and just accepting that they're different. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, that's what I said last week, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think at this point I'm ever going to prefer the new version. But I'll get past it. <laughs> I'll, I'll live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the material is not quite the same. The music is incredible. Yeah, the guys who've made the score, from the writers to the performers, I mean, the, there are performers this time round, whereas last time it was all just MIDI made by the composer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's You can tell listening to it that it was a serious undertaking. Mm-hmm. There are hundreds of tracks in this game, mm-hmm. and they're all perfectly produced. <laughs> they've 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 taken a lot of time, and there are a lot of them are different to each other as well. There's like a full orchestral score, but then some tracks are like there's a hip hop one, there's proper electro stuff. It's really they've gone out of the way, and you can tell. I mean, I played a little bit of fifteen. Mickey played all of fifteen, and at the end of it, we're both looking at each other like, well, that was one to forget. And seven, the remake, we're about ten or fifteen hours in and we're both playing it. And we're both like, Yeah, I'm in. This is interesting. Mm-hmm. I like this. Mm-hmm. And it's the question is how do you end up with one game that's so boring and forgettable and dull? And then the next game be so interesting and riveting. I can't afford to fuck up seven. Well no, they're trying. <laughs> They're trying pretty hard, but what? To, to screw up. up? Yeah, I mean, there's there's just things in there. Combat. No, no, not just that. I mean, a lot of the plot points have been changed, and again, no spoilers. Yeah, but, that doesn't change the gameplay though. Like, that's no, but if I'm not a fan of the gameplay and I'm not particularly pleased by some of the plot changes, what's left? Yeah, but uh, we can get into a whole debate of this. There's a big <laughs> difference between whether you actually don't like the plot changes or you don't like that it's different because you're looking at it nostalgically based on what's something that it was doing a remake of something. Once you, when, if you have experience of the original, it means that you can't have an objective view of the remake regardless. So, mm. like, and, and that's part of my, my point to a degree as well is that given that they have to try and make sure that they're, doing what they think is the best on every part of that game because expectations are so high whereas with the more recent games like it's a little bit easier to phone it in because it's like we're successful we'll just make another game they'll buy it yeah which is interesting that that 14 is a good example was done so it was phoned in so badly they had to completely remake the game Mm hmm but yeah, you know, it's, it's which is the uh, online one? Is that 15? 14. 14. 14 and 11. Was it? Yeah, it was 11, were the online ones. Yeah, I played quite a bit of the of 14, uh, but fairly recently, sort of thing. It was good. I didn't play it before, it was like before. 
Mm. But yeah, no, it's it's definitely entertaining. Yes. So uh, that was the news. Um, <laughs> yeah. Any questions from chat? Now is a good time. Now that we have done the thing, uh, let's just see if there's anything, any technical news, any anything that's come in from the members of our community. While we wait for those, I will just again mention that there's this whole show and the whole channel is brought to you through Patreon and through your support, which is something we are incredibly grateful for. And yeah, do consider checking that out. Uh, hit the like button if you've not already. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more uh, regular content. I've got more videos coming up uh, reviewing stuff like uh, SE microphones. I'm due a review from Vol uh, a duo guitar from Vola Guitars to review very soon. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Mage Prometheus has been playing Defender for almost 40 years. I love Defender. Not a big fan of the original controls. Um, something... Uh, I've been a bit of an arcade fan as long as, since I was about, I don't know, five or six years old. Uh, my dad was a much bigger arcade fan than I was. Uh, have you ever played Defender? Mm. Very old Williams arcade. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in a spaceship and you've got to try and rescue people by kind of dropping down and picking them up and shooting the aliens. and Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the original arcade controls uh, were really awkward. Like there was forward and then there was reverse rather than just left and right and that kind of thing. And there were so many buttons that like you ended up with this kind of spider control. There was no joystick. It was all mm-hmm. just rah. And then Defender 2, I believe, and I'm really stretching my memory now, you actually had a joystick and it was much better. But yeah, so many people swore by Defender and my dad was one of those. That he spent so much money on Defender that apparently they had to stop him playing it at one point. Mm-hmm. Mm. But yes, um, here's, yeah, let me think. Yeah, um... One thing that's probably worth talking about in the technical section of the show is the stream that I did on Monday, which has turned out to be really successful. Um, I did a mix of the song by Dragged Under, which is Fluff's band, uh, using nothing but Reaper's stock inbuilt plugins. A couple of impulse responses of reverbs, which I got for free, which the reason that I did it on uh, only stock pro- plugins and not just free plugins is mm-hmm. that that makes it platform agnostic because Reaper can work on Linux, it can work on Macs, it can work on PCs, and all the mm-hmm. plugins come with it and they work by default on different platforms. Mm-hmm. I tried it on my Raspberry Pi and bless it, it tried, but before I'd even put a single plugin on, uh, the process usage was already at 40% just from going through different folder routines. <laughs> it was just panicking the poor thing. I wonder if I... What? I was just doing an impression of the pie. Oh, right, okay, because I didn't see your lips move. I just kind of had this random sound. Must have had a bit of a drop of sync there, because it literally looked like you'd just gone, Aah! like some sort of weird ventriloquist. <laughs> I, can, I can throw my screams. Do you, do you not have this ability? <laughs> yes. Oh, up, down, hyperspace. Oh, nobody liked the hyperspace button in uh, Defenders, just going back to that. If you're in trouble, you could press a button and you would disappear and reappear somewhere else on the map but where who knows <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and and yeah it it came out a lot better than i thought i would uh i thought it would this this mix in just reaper i was really quite impressed um a lot of the js plugins are made by a guy called mr stillwell and at some point in the early 2010s i paid for a lot of stillwell plugins and used them on mixes including the minutes to recover album and mm-hmm. it turns out they're all included for free in Reaper without the pretty uh, interfaces. Right. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the new plugins are really, really good, and I really, really like them. But I did manage to get some great sounds out of the old stuff. I did have to really stretch my imagination with some stuff and really wrangle some old plugins, but made it work. And it turned out okay. I mean, there's... the inbuilt uh, impulse response loader that I can add uh, reverbs into where I've got a big folder full of reverbs that I got for free that model 
uh, Bracasti M7, which is one of the most expensive and nicest reverb units in the world. <laughs> Can you order a Raspberry Pi in a pub? Uh, depends if they serve food. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that I get people like, there was someone on the channel a couple of days ago who gave me a like, three-page long rant about, like, I'm still using this computer from 15 years ago. You don't need this. You don't need that. And I'm like, well, if you work on your own stuff in the comfort of your own home, yeah, why not? But if you so much as need to do one thing for a client and it needs, needs to be done now, you can't really do that. I mean, you see authors like you know, George R. R. Martin still uses an Apple II to write all his novels on because, you know, it can't be hacked and, you know, it can't end up on Facebook <laughs> while he's writing, that kind of thing. <laughs> so he... <laughs> yeah, the only way to, air, way to air gap a computer is to have one that doesn't have a Wi-Fi card. Yeah. I mean, just Makes sense to me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, or build a computer without a Wi-Fi card in it, without an Ethernet card, and never plug it in. doesn't have to be an Apple II. <laughs> I don't I'm think sure he went out of his way and went, you know what, I'm going to go and get an Apple II. I think he's using the same machine that he's yeah, had. Yeah. yeah, but still, I mean, for what he's doing, it makes logical sense. But for what we do, we need horsepower. I, you know. I don't think logical sense <laughs> is valid there, but I think it's acceptable. Well, it's like, to their own. maybe he but deals badly you... with distractions and he's like, I've got this thing, it does what I need. If you want to debate me on... The logic, the logic of using an Apple II over any modern piece of equipment. <laughs> I, I will have you at that debate. You think you should just get like a nice clunky keyboard and plug it into his iPhone? Sure, why not? Well, no, because then it'll be you could hack, you get it hacked, and that's what he doesn't want. You be safe. Just get any old laptop, and if you want a mechanical keyboard, yeah, you can, I'm sure you can buy um, like typewriter keyboards as well. Um, I remember seeing one advertised to me on Facebook. Yeah, the ultimate buy, like, hipster. Yeah, buy keyboards that are designed to actually feel like a proper typewriter for people that are used to writing with typewriters. Mm. Right. As as Marty has quite rightly pointed in chat, Stephen King has a wang. I don't get it. He uh, he he uses an old school computer like George R. R. Martin, and the brand is Wang. Okay. But just the sentence out of context is beautiful. It is. I'm sure he does have a wang. I would not assume it, but... Oh, question from uh, Irvin uh, from Denmark. Hello. Uh, my opinions Hello. on the Valhalla verb and delay plugins. I've heard people get great sounds out of them. I've never got great sounds out of them myself. I don't know why, but there's something about the Valhalla plugins that... It doesn't make sounds that appeal to me. They always sound a bit too clinical and harsh. And that could be me. That could be that I just haven't spent the time to get to grips with it. But I've heard people like Nolly used to swear by it. I don't know if he still does. Uh, but I just don't like it. Uh, do doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, so that's that's my opinion. I'm sure it's fine, but for me, it doesn't do what I want it to do, or at least other plugins did what I wanted it to do easier and quicker. Which I suppose for me, the way that I mix is the crux of it, is I don't want to spend half an hour tweaking something to get the perfect reverb. I want to l l load up a, pre uh, a reverb and go, that's it, bit less low end, bit less of this, right, let's go. Mm-hmm. I mix a lot like somebody like Chris Lord Algae. I, I like to mix quickly. Not because I don't care or I don't want to put the attention in, but because I want my gut instinct to be driving me forward rather than spending hours and hours on something. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the way that I tend to mix. Uh, have I met Nolly since he's in the UK now? Uh, I have not. Uh, I have met lots and lots of people who know him, but just through geography or whatever, I'm in the north, he's in the south, we just haven't met in person. By all accounts, he's a lovely man, and I'd quite like to meet him, but yeah, no, just, just not run into him. 
I mean, the UK is bigger than people think, especially the North-South divide. Um, it's one of those things where I don't know where he lives, but it's definitely South Coast. And yeah, he's personal friends with my friends from Zilla. I know that much. Uh, but we've just happened to have not been in the same room together. Just one of those things. Uh, audio Any other questions? Yeah, uh, Audio Dabbler says he loves the Eventide Black Hole reverb. I have heard that, and I really like some of the sounds out of that. Mm. Sounds not... Here's the thing, though. It It's not, to my ears, it's not a mixing reverb. It's what I would call a creative reverb. It's the kind of thing that a guitarist would pick to make a nice, big, expansive guitar sound. And they would do that as a creative choice, and they would go, well, this is part of this song, this, you know, this is something that defines this part. To which I would go, nice, cool, lovely. Uh, if I was mixing a song and just wanted to add a bit of depth, a bit of space, that kind of thing, I wouldn't pick it because it's too much. It's It's one of those that's loud and proud, and it's like, I'm the black hole, listen to me raw. And I would just be like, yeah, cool. Back in your box, mate. <laughs> uh, CLA's workflow is crazy. Don't completely dig his sound, but it's a legend. All right. Yeah, I don't mix exactly like Chris Lord Algae. I, I, I don't, I don't do what he does. I don't copy him. That's yeah. So just, just to clear that up, I'm, I don't mix like him, but I like a lot of his ethos of go find sounds that work for you then when they work for you and you know how to get to them quickly, go with your instincts rather than spending hours messing around with one thing. Yeah, I like that because then you can always come back to it an hour later with a fresh mindset, find things that aren't right and fix them quicker than if you'd spent hours tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. Mm -hmm. Plus, I also spend hours before a mix doing all the stuff that is mix assistant would do a separate member of staff like cleaning up the edits making sure everything's in the right order everything's in the right channels the right folders so on so on so on that's not mixing that's prep work <laughs> which i do do but i then go away have a coffee clear my head before i actually start doing the thing mm -hmm. something i highly recommend to all of you if you want to mix a song is don't be editing in the middle of mixing. It will completely throw you off, ruin your workflow, and, and confuse you. Mm -hmm. And you'll, you'll end up stuck in a hole trying to fix an edit when you should be mixing. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things. Anyway. Yes. Sorry? I said I didn't, I remember you didn't know, always used to do that. I did not. It's yeah. very true. Um, I used to be one of those. I still sometimes, if I'll hear something that needs fixing, I'll go in mm -hmm. and fix it. But I try. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I used to be distracted very easily by things like that. But I I try now, before I even get to that point, to go through and look for problems, uh, clean it all up almost dispassionately, just mm -hmm. Out to lunch, almost, using the technical part of my brain and just combing through tracks and making sure they're all as they should be, levels are right, there's no problems, blah, 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 blah. Because that's not fun. That's, that's the stuff that needs to be done but isn't fun. So if I can do the not fun stuff while I'm still having my morning coffee and still coming round and, you know... Eat the frog. <laughs> the, hmm? Eat the frog. Eat the frog? Mm-hmm. It's not a phrase yeah. I've heard. What's that from? Yeah, it's just, I, my, uh, my wife introduced me to it several years ago. Uh, it means do the, the worst thing first, the biggest job first. Right, okay. You don't want to do. Uh, I don't know why it's eat the frog, but it's eat the frog. Okay. There you go. Eat the frog. Yes, devour the Frenchman. What? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> and so, yeah, um... Oh, um, so uh, the uh, question, uh, I use free plugins, but the Nugent stuff looks impressive in the marketing blurb. Have I tried them? No, uh, I've not really tried the new Nugent stuff. Uh, I've heard good things about them again, uh, but I don't know anybody who uses their stuff. 
and it's one of those so things. How do you good things then. Um, Facebook mostly. Uh, I'm part of quite a few production groups where people say good things about stuff or say bad things about stuff. But unless I actually personally know the person, I don't take that reference strongly, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, if I know someone personally and they are raving about something and saying, you should really check this out, I very quickly usually do. Uh, but if, you know, if it's people just saying, oh, th- this is nice, then I just read that and go, huh, okay, that's nice. <laughs> I'll remember that. Because if nobody's saying bad about stuff, I mean, it looks like uh, a lot of their uh, toolkits to do with, like post production and surround sound and uh, true peak limiters and stuff. Uh, oh, good question from James Horan. Hello, James. Uh, good to see you again. James is the the guy who I did the interview with about Raspberry Pis and why I'm not doing any more videos on them at the moment. Uh, Mm -hmm. So the question was, when you do the prep edits, like I was just talking about, uh, when you're done, do you bounce it down to commit or do you leave it to make changes at a later date? I leave it. Um, Once all my edits are done, I leave it open. Uh, Firstly, I don't want to be bouncing stuff down and then leaving these big gaps of silence and that kind of thing. Um, I like to see properly trimmed audio. I like to see properly trimmed edits. Uh, it also shows me on screen where there's supposed to be sound and when there's not supposed to be sound. As obvious as that seems, um, skim reading what's coming up gives me a good idea of what I should be hearing next, which mm-hmm. I know you're supposed to mix with your ears, not with your eyes, that kind of thing. But especially working on other people's music, I often don't know what I'm supposed to be hearing next. And so if I see a little block for, I don't know, a choir coming up and then it gets to that point and I can't hear a choir, my brain starts asking questions. You know, for example, and going, well, why can't I hear that? Or why isn't that being picked out? Or, you know, oh, that thing that just came in, that's really overbearing. What was that? Oh, it was that channel. That kind of thing. I just find that's really useful. And if it does happen that I've missed an edit, or creatively there's a little bit that needs to be cut. If I can see it all, if I can see all those edits, I can very quickly dive in and go, well, cut, 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 cut. (laughs) A really good example was um, the mix I did last week. Uh, Chelsea, there's there's a section in the middle where it goes one, two, three, four, stop. And everything stops. And then the vocal comes in. And I could see very cleanly on the edits where there was a big gap, but the drums weren't cut because the drums very naturally were playing and then they all stopped. A few cymbals rang out a little bit. Sounded nice. When it came to the mix, I decided that as nice as that felt, it was not right. So I then went in and dived in and really cut those drums out. And then it really had that real effect of one two three four sh- where you hear goes oh whoa silence what happened and that's the kind of thing where i'd left that available to me and it probably made it quicker that i could see where that was coming up and i could dive right into the right place but yeah mm-hmm. good question well done sir good answer good question so, yeah, um, new gen stuff looks cool. It, it looks a bit, I don't know, uh, a bit post-production-y. <laughs> it's hard to say. Um, it looks like stuff that I would use if someone made me use it, and it's not bad stuff. There's, like, stereo, there's surround sound up mixing and down mixing and stuff. Uh, master check? Yeah. Um, now with SoundCloud and MP3 support. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's funny. That's probably a good place to end the stream, actually, is, yeah, uh, the final thought for the day. Uh, you get a lot of this uh, perceived wisdom of mix with your, your ears, not with your eyes. But if you can then get to a point where you can then mix with your eyes again, you can see what's coming up rather than looking at what is the now. Mm-hmm. 
and it's a lot like reading the road when you drive. Yeah. You know, they, they say, like, when you're driving, don't stare at the road, that kind of thing. Look out for other cars, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. you get to be a really good driver, and you learn how to look further ahead. That kind of thing. And you learn what to look for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think that's what it is with me, is that it's being able to read it at a distance and just... Uh, yeah, I mean, quite often... I'll look at a vocal line for an entire four or five minute song and a singer will say to me, well, can we go back to the start of verse two? And because everything's properly trimmed, I can literally just go click, right, let's go. And I've had it in the studio where they go, how did you do that? You're a wizard. And I'm going, I'm not a wizard. I've trimmed and edited everything so I can see where chorus one ends and where verse two begins because all the backing vocals stop, et cetera, et cetera. I can just see it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it's like anything. I didn't do that with my ears. I did that with my eyes. <laughs> but then the things that you have to do with your ears, I still do with my ears. And I don't rely on meters for what I'm supposed to be hearing. Yeah, <laughs> just touch the interface circuit board to feel the raw data. Perfect. <laughs> so that's a good place to end this, this, this week's podcast, I think. That was uh, a good nugget there. It, <laughs> yes, thank you. Took some pushing, but we eventually got the nugget out. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, so, yes, uh, we'll be back over the weekend. I think I'll be doing another live stream. I've got plenty of editing to be getting on with. And maybe next week I'll have uh, a new guitar to play with, or an actual new guitar to play with, depending on when the post turns up with the Vola guitars. That'll be amazing. Mm. And so, uh, it's going to be an interesting week, and I will see you all in a stream. I will try my best to let everybody know uh, beforehand when a stream is going to go live uh, so that everybody gets maximum eyeball viewership. <laughs> and Maximum eyeballs. Nice. Yes. Uh, so that, make, let's make sure everyone has maximum eyeballs. Yes. <laughs> and well, if not, then we'll see you on Thursday, 8 p.m., 8.05 and we'll see you there. Same time, same channel. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Goodbye. Bye.